we're going to shift gears now and we're going to talk about AVL trees. So the first thing I need to tell you is that today's lesson on AVL trees uh, comes from a lesson that I took from the internet from some, another individual. So there was a summer I spent looking at like 10 different AVL videos and there's one of these that is just way better than the others and that's this one right here. Uh, that explains why it's got applying for residency right so many more views than the other ones. It's got nearly a million views. I didn't think there would be a million, pe million people interested in AVL trees in the whole world, but apparently there are. Uh, in any case, um, this guy's name is Abdul Bari, and he has uh, a lot of great computer science videos. And <clears throat> if you don't understand my lesson for today, of course, you can look at the video I'm going to post. But I think another great alternative would be to look at the original video that he has here on AVL trees. Okay? All right. So let's get going. Okay. Uh, I, what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to look at this particular tree and discuss with your partner, is it a binary search tree? Uh, yes or no? And if it's not, then what we, do we need to change in order to fix it? So please have a look now and try and make a decision. Okay. Uh, Mr. Basu, sir, do you think that this is a binary search tree right now as it is constructed? It is not. Sir, where is the violation? Can you tell me? 60 and 45. Okay. These two are not right because 60 is larger than 50, so it should be on the right-hand side, and 45 is smaller, so that needs to be on the left-hand side. So let me just fix those. Okay. Is it now a binary search tree? It is. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about how many nodes there are here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven nodes. And what is the height of this tree? Now, when we talked about the height of trees, we said that there was some uh, disagreement among computer scientists. Remember, there were two different formulas we said. We said that some people said that if there's, like, look, look, look in this box. Like, is there a tree here? Well, technically there is. There's an empty tree there. And some people said that the height of this empty tree was what? And other people said what? Who remembers the two situations? Miss Mila? Uh, okay, so some people said it was zero, and some people said it was negative one. So we, we can use either definition. It, it doesn't really matter. As long as we're consistent for all the work that we're going to do today, we can use either definition. I'm just going to say that we'll count the edges. So we'll say here that the height of this tree is like two. Okay, so I'm going to count this edge here and this edge there and just say call it two. Okay, now um, you agree though that if this tree were to degrade into a link list that it would just, you know, like be, let's say it was like running like that, it would just be a much higher tree, right? So we say that the tree is in balance if the, if the height of the tree is approximately on the order of uh, log of n. Today we're going to have a much more strict definition by what we mean by a balanced tree, but this is a good starting definition for us. And looking at this definition, is this tree balanced? We agree that it is. Okay, let's look at another tree. Let's look at this one. And is this tree balanced? Please discuss with your partner. Mr. Ramrani, what is your opinion, sir? It is. Could it be any more balanced? So now the question is, is this tree balanced? What do you think about that? What do you think, balanced or not balanced? It is not. So you intuitively have an idea of what is balanced and not balanced. Today, I'm going to mathematically quantify which trees are balanced and which are not balanced by introducing a concept known as a balance factor. And that's going to allow us to calculate whether a tree is balanced or not. When we calculate balance factors for an AVL tree, we will always get a number like this. We will get a balance factor that's going to be one of these numbers. If we get a balance factor that is like this or like this, that means that the tree has temporarily gone out of balance and we need to do a rotation on it to bring it back into balance, to have the balance factor be restored on every node to, in this range. What does it mean if we get a balance factor like this or like this? What does that mean? Yes? It means you screwed up. That should never happen. 
Okay, that should never happen. The, 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 on a steady state basis, the balance factors have to be like this. They can temporarily go as high or low as this, but if we were working on the tree correctly, we should never get balance factors like that. We are going to discuss now this set of inputs here. Uh, the items that go inside the, the nodes of a binary search tree are sometimes called the keys. That's just literature, nomenclature, but they have other names also. They can be called the values of the node. I'm going to refer to them as keys today. And let's say that we have these numbers that are present in a queue. They're in a queue. And we're going to say that the head of the queue is on the left and the tail of the queue is on the right. So as we extract information from the queue, we're going to read these numbers left to right, just like we read a book. And what I want to know is if we ended up creating a binary search tree from this queue, what would it look like? Please draw that now with your partner. 30 will be the first node that we insert into the tree. Okay, Mr. Franovic, can you tell us, sir, what will the tree look like after we're finished? We agree then that 30, 20, 10 would result in this sequence right here. And what I want to know is, are other, start, are other sequences possible for the same set of inputs. Okay, what I would like you to do now is I would like you to figure out how many other sequences are possible and then draw the resulting tree from every single possible sequence. Mr. Nikita, are you all finished, sir? Okay. Sir, can you tell me how many different input sequences are there for three numbers that are all... Uh, now, I will tell you that the six input sequences do only result in five tree configurations, so maybe that was what you meant. But let's just look at another one here. Mr. Nikita, just give me one more, sir. What, what sequence would we like to discuss next? So let's look at another example. Who wants to give me another example here? Miss, uh, Miss uh, Olivia, well, give me another example. Anybody want to give me another example? Mr. Schulson. OK, let's do that one. Now, we're missing one input sequence. No, we're missing, uh, we're missing. Uh, two of them. Yeah. Uh, we're missing this one. Okay, those are all the ones that we have. Now, we had, um, we had three inputs. We had three inputs. And we had one, two, three, four, five, six different ways of arranging the three inputs. We agree? Okay, if I have five inputs that are all unique, Right? Oh, I have five keys to insert, and they're all unique. What is the formula that I can use to calculate how many different permutations there are going to be? Please discuss with your partner. You're getting there. Yes, sir. N it's n factorial. So here you can see I have three keys. So it will be three factorial, which is six different setups. If I have five inputs, how much would that be? How much is five factorial? So this would be five times four times three times two times one. That's 20 times three is 60 times two is 120. So we have that. Why is it n factorial? How many choices do I have for the root node if I have five inputs? How many choices? I have five. How many numbers are left over for the next input? Four. four. So go five times four, three, two, one. Yes? Make sense? OK. So you can see here that if I have n unique keys, I would have n factorial different arrangements of the inputs. That doesn't mean I have n factorial arrangements of the trees. You can see right here that two of the input sequences yielded the same tree. But that's how many input sequences I would have. Now, let's have a look at these trees right here. Oh, I didn't want that. And let's just be a little bit subjective and say, which are the good trees and which are the bad trees? Please discuss with your partner. Who can help me figure out which are the good trees? and which? Mr. Emrani, this is your day, sir. Thank you. So this is the good tree, and the other ones are bad. Sir, why is this one the good one, and the other ones are the bad ones? It, it, it is balanced, that's right. This is balanced, the other ones are all unbalanced. 
What we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to take the unbalanced trees that you see here and make them balanced. And in order to do that, we're going to introduce the concept of a rotation. We're going to say that this tree right here is unbalanced, and the reason that it's unbalanced is that it has an LL imbalance. Left, left imbalance. To fix this, we're going to take a nail and we're going to hammer it right under the root node. And then I'm going to grab this tree by the root and I'm going to pull it across the nail. And that's going to rotate the tree. And when the tree gets rotated in this direction, it's going to transform itself from here to here. And when that happens, have I violated any of the rules for a binary search tree? I know that this is a binary search tree, but after I've rotated, is the resulting tree also a binary search tree? So you agree then that it'll contain the same information and it'll still be a binary search tree, it'll just be balanced. You can probably guess what this rotation is going to be called. What do you think? This is called an RR imbalance. This is called an LL imbalance, so the rotation is an LL rotation. This is an RR imbalance, so we're going to do an RR rotation. Once again, I put a nail here, and I grab this node, and I pull it, and so it'll turn this tree into this one. Let's look at this one. How would we describe the imbalance for this tree right here? What would be the two letters that we use to describe the imbalance? Mr. Amarali, this really is your day, sir. He's killing it today, just killing it. This is an RL imbalance, RL. So we need to do a rotation. We need to do a rotation, an RL rotation in order to fix this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a rotation this way and then a rotation that way to fix it. So now these were single step rotations. This is going to be a two-step rotation. And my question is, what would this first rotation turn this tree into? What do you think? I'm going to put a little nail here. I'm going to grab this root node or in this root of the subtree, and I'm going to pull it. What's it going to look like afterwards? Mr. F, sorry. That's right. It'll look like a link list. That's, that's good enough, sir. It'll look like that, right? And then I'm going to rotate it in the other direction, and it's going to be similar to this rotation. It's going to end up looking like that now. Let's look at this one. This is going to be an LR imbalance, left, right. So we're going to need to do a rotation this way and then that way. The first rotation will result in us going like this. And then we will rotate it back to the right like this to bring it back to looking like that. Now, what you should probably be thinking right now, well, so well, that was pretty easy with just three nodes, but what if it's like 50 nodes? Here is the key to AVL trees. All rotations are done on three nodes. The other stuff that's hanging around here, let's say that there's a subtree here or a subtree here, or maybe there's some subtrees over here like that, they will all find a place after we do these rotations. And it's relatively easy to find out where those subtrees go. So when you're doing the rotation, don't worry about the subtrees. Just figure out the three nodes that need to be rotated. And there are only four rotations that are ones you need to know, LL, R, 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 L, and L, R. Those are the only rotations you need to know.